Hello and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, what we're going to do is check out the ping command. Now granted, there's a good chance that you might already be familiar with the ping command, but it is an essential command, something that we absolutely need to cover. And if nothing else, you might actually gain additional knowledge within this video, because what I'm going to do is show you some examples of ping in action, and I think it's going to be a fun video. So let's go ahead and get started. And here on my terminal, what I'm going to do is start us off by showing you the most basic usage of the ping command, and then from there, we'll dive deeper into the subject. To use the ping command, we simply type ping along with either the IP address of the target node, or even the domain name attached to the node if it has one. So for example, what I'll do is type ping, and then I'll type in an IP address. So the IP address that I'll type in is 172.105. Dot dot and if this command works, what it's going to do is send pings to this particular IP address, and if the target is actually online, it should respond. Let's see what happens. And as we can see right here, this particular host is replying to my pings, which implies that this server is actually online. So what I'll do is hold Control and press C to cancel out of that. And in this quick example right here, I just used the ping command along with an IP address, and we received some replies, which is the most basic usage of the command, because again, we use the ping command to see if something is actually responding on the network, or even something on the internet. Now, using an IP address, there's nothing wrong with that, but when it comes to us, we're humans, or at least I'm assuming you're a human. You might not be, I might not be, maybe none of us are humans. Okay, I'm going to need to think about that after this video. But anyway, as humans, we generally remember names better than we remember numbers. So what I'll do is I'll type ping, and then I'll type the actual domain name that's attached to the IP address that I've just used, which is actually better known as learnlinux.tv. Anyway, I'll press enter, and as we can see, the instance is in fact online. And I would certainly hope it's online, because if it wasn't, well, that wouldn't be good. I definitely want to make sure that the official website for this channel is always online, and thankfully, as of the time I'm recording this video, it currently is, in fact, online. Now, when you ping a host name, an IP address, a domain name, whatever it is you're pinging, the ping is going to be endless. It's just going to keep pinging over and over and over again. And to break out of that, we can hold Control and press C. And what that does is it gets us back to the command line and ends the ping process. So far, what's been happening anytime I use the ping command is that I'm executing a repeating ping against the server and when the server receives the ping, it responds to it. And like I mentioned earlier, it's going to do that over and over and over again. And the reason for that is because unless you tell the ping command otherwise, then it's just going to ping over and over and over again without stopping. Anyway, continuing, the type of network traffic that we've seen with the ping command is actually known as ICMP. And that actually stands for Internet Control Message Protocol. That's the protocol that ping uses when it goes to reach a server. When my local machine attempts to ping Learn Linux TV, it's actually sending a special message known as an ICMP echo request. And if the target server responds, it sends back an ICMP echo reply. And that's what we see right here. We even see ICMP is listed in the output. So we know that this is ICMP. And if you didn't already know that, then you know that now. And the process, in my case, worked just fine. Now, the reason why I felt the need to mention the type of network messaging that ping utilizes is because the distinction is actually important. When an administrator implements a firewall, they could choose to create a rule in that firewall to block ICMP traffic. And if they do block ICMP, then the ping process will not work. And considering that ICMP is its own type of network traffic, that makes it super easy for a firewall administrator to distinguish that traffic, and if they've decided to do so, block that traffic. I'll talk more about why we might want to block ICMP later on in the video, so let's disregard that for now and focus on the fact that ping utilizes ICMP to do what it does. Anyway, let's see another example. I've mentioned earlier that if you don't actually give any other options to the ping command, that it's just going to ping repeatedly and never stop. Now, an interesting aside here is that if you use the ping command on Windows, and yes, the ping command does exist on Windows as well, it's not completely the same thing, but it does the same thing, and the Windows version will actually ping four times and then stop. So that's actually one difference between the Linux version of ping and the Windows version of ping. Linux by default will ping forever, 
and the Windows version of the ping command will only ping four times. But here on Linux, we can actually control how many pings we get from a ping command. And to do that, we'll add the dash C option to the ping command. And it's going to look something like this. So again, we type ping and then dash C. And after dash C, which stands for count, we give it a number how many times we would like the ping process to go on for. So for example, I'll just give it six. And then I'll ping the website for this channel. I think that's a good example to use, so I'll press enter. And there we go. The server was pinged six times, and that's exactly the number that I gave it for the dash C option. Then after it reached the sixth ping, it went ahead and exited. And at the end of the ping process right here, we see some statistics that might be helpful. And one of the most common things that we look at is the time at the end of each reply, because that tells us how many milliseconds it took for the reply to happen, which actually can get into seconds, but we would definitely prefer not to see that reach seconds. Milliseconds are definitely better, the faster the better. But any time the replies take more than a few seconds or some ridiculous amount of time, then that might imply that we have some sort of network latency or issue going on, and we might want to look into that. Also, we see the percentage of packet loss, which is definitely something that we want to pay attention to. And packets can be lost every now and then, but generally speaking, we really don't want that to happen. And the closer to zero we are when it comes to packet loss, the better. In my case, all six were transmitted and received, so we're basically perfect in this case. But if you happen to see a large number of dropped packets, that might be another sign that there could be some issues here. So the point is, Ping is actually a network troubleshooting utility as well. But to be fair, it's not much of a network troubleshooting utility. It's just like the first level. It doesn't tell us all that much. It might imply that there's a problem if some of these numbers are, you know, not what we'd like them to be. Lots of dropped packets or a very long reply when it comes to each ping, things like that. Ping is something that we can use as the first level when we're troubleshooting something to answer questions like, is the server available? Does it reply quick enough? Are there dropped packets? But it's not going to give you the actual root cause. It might imply that there's an actual problem, which is the reason why ping is considered the first level when you're going to troubleshoot a network connection. And then that might help you decide which other network utilities you might want to use to find out what the actual problem happens to be. Now let's move on to another use case for the ping command. So what I'll do is type ping, and I'll just do a count of five. I think that's good enough. And what I'll ping is 8.8.8.8. Now there's a reason why I'm giving you guys a very specific IP address. And the reason for this is because it's often the case that we might use the ping command to determine whether or not we have an internet connection. I mean, sure, we could just open up a web browser, and if a web page loads, then that probably stands to reason that we have a live internet connection. But on a server, you might not have a web browser, and you could have an issue where you do have an internet connection, but when you open a web browser, it doesn't work. But that in and of itself doesn't mean you don't have a connection to the internet because DNS could be a problem. So by executing this command right here and pinging the IP address of 8.8.8.8, .8 that actually helps us understand that our internet connection is actually live because that IP address right there is actually one of Google's DNS servers out on the internet. And if we're able to reach that, then it means that we're definitely online. So in the real world, if you have a situation where your users are not able to visit web pages, then what you can do as the administrator is try to ping Google's DNS. If you're able to do that and it's successful, then you know that your internet connection is actually fine, you're connected. But if your users are having a problem and you are able to ping this IP address, then the problem is probably DNS or one of your network services that aren't working. So at least you know that your internet connection is working at this point, and that rules something out. And then you can look at your local DNS server, maybe your DHCP server or something like that, and make a determination as far as what the problem might be. But again, as the first level of troubleshooting, ping is actually very useful, because in this case, we at least know that the internet connection is live, and sometimes ruling something out is, well, extremely helpful. So let's move on to another example of the ping command. And this is yet another example that people use in the real world. Basically, what I'm going to do is show you that you could find out when a server has come back online, you know, if you're maybe rebooting a server after maintenance, 
You could use the ping command to find out exactly when the server has become available. And this is certainly better than executing the SSH command over and over and over again until the server comes back. With the ping command, you can find out exactly when it is back to save yourself from executing the command over and over again. And it's very simple to do. All you do is type ping and then the IP address or host name, DNS name, whatever you have is normal. I'm going to use the IP address in my case. I have a server at 10.10.10.222 and I'm going to start an infinite ping. But what I'm going to do while I'm pinging it is I'm going to reboot the server. So right now we know the server is in fact online. So I'll go ahead and reboot it. And notice how the pings are no longer happening. It's no longer replying. It's just kind of hanging here. Now the takeaway here is if you're doing some sort of maintenance on a server, for example, installing updates, then you could find out exactly when the server went offline and then when the server came back online. And now it's actually responding again. As you can see right here, we are now getting replies again, which means the server is now back online. Also notice on the bottom, we have a packet loss of 37%. So we did actually lose packets, but in this case, that's fine. We're expecting to lose packets because we've rebooted the server. The server can't reply when it's offline. So in this case, we're going to excuse the fact that we've actually lost some packets here. That doesn't matter in this context, but we were able to use ping to find out when the server came back online. And that's just one more example of a real world scenario that ping might come in handy for. Like I mentioned in the intro, the ping command is one of the simpler commands that we can learn, but it's very effective and we could use it to troubleshoot network connections or at least begin to troubleshoot network connections. If nothing else, we could find out if, you know, ping times are slower than we'd like, if there's no ping response at all, which might imply that a server is down or there could be a firewall. The ping command is definitely very important for us to know and thankfully it's easy to learn as you saw in this video. We worked through some of the more common examples of the ping command, so hopefully that's helped you out. Anyway, we have more content coming on this channel, so definitely subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you in the next video.